Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to 50 Shades of Tay. I'm Taylor and I just got back to where I'm staying from day one of four of CinemaCon. Oh my God, you guys, I can't even put into words how amazing today was. Honestly, one of my favorite days ever. I am just so overwhelmed with just how thankful I am, how appreciative I am, and how, how awesome today was. Uh, let me just start it from the beginning. So back in June of 1991, wait a sec, not, not that far back. And also don't, I wasn't born in the nineties. I'm only 21. Uh, first person I met up with today was Chris Carr and, uh, she just got her hair done. She looked as beautiful as ever. I was so happy to see her and be reunited. I haven't seen her in about a week and then she was going to go take me to go check in. And along the way, we ran into the one, the only, Robert Meyer Burnett. He is known as the titan of twerking, uh, the sultan of sugar daddies, and the ravenger of redheads, as you guys know. And uh, I was just so happy to see him, like in Baywatch, when they do that slow motion run on the beach. I like slowly ran up to him and I gave him the biggest hug. And it just felt so good to be re reunited with both Rob and Chris. I just, I miss them both so much and I love them with all my heart and um, to see them both and just, uh, I, I love them both. And I am so happy because we have the whole week. We have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday still. And I'm hoping to be able to film something with one or both of them. Uh, it's just, it's gonna be a packed week. <laughs> so we'll see if I can't do it this week, don't worry. I will have both of them on the channel soon. Uh, I just love them both so much and cannot wait to do something with them soon. But back to CinemaCon. So both Chris and Rob, I was sandwiched in between two of my favorite humans. I felt so happy to be back with them again. Uh, they took me to go check in and to go get my credentials. And um, I did not know this. I knew it was gonna say my name. You guys, this is like so overwhelming. But uh, when I went to go check in, here it is. Oh, maybe I shouldn't put maybe I shouldn't put the barcode. But uh, Taylor Gonzalez, right? CinemaCon, Fifty Shades of Tay. You guys, I did it. My YouTube channel, it's on here. How incredible is that? Like, what an overwhelming, like, proud moment for me just to be like, oh, I'm here because of my YouTube channel that I've been working so hard on and uh, because of you guys. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart for everyone who has been supporting me and watching my videos and just sending all these words of encouragement and helping me get here to where I am. Uh, I can't stop looking at it. I keep looking at it and it's just like, Taylor Gonzalez, Fifty Shades of Tay. Isn't this, this is nuts. This is the first, because I've, I've had a couple press uh, events before, but it's just my name or it's just a wristband. This is the first thing I've ever had that has my YouTube channel name on it. And it's just like, I don't know. First of many, you guys, first of many, you guys, we are on an upwards trajectory together. Me, you guys, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. And um, what an incredible feeling. So I checked in with Rob and Chris. I feel like I could do it for like 15 minutes, but it's getting close to 11 and I gotta be up at like six for, I think it's Warner Brothers tomorrow. So I, I won't do it for 15 minutes, but uh, just, yeah. Checked in, had my stuff. The next thing they gave me, they gave me like a little golden ticket, which I don't have anymore because I had to hand it in, but I had a little golden ticket. And with that golden ticket, you guys, they gave me this giant Fast X. Look at this thing, it's, it's a big, it's a big sack, a big sack of love from Santa. I was on the nice list or the naughty list. I guess the naughty list. What? I don't even know what's happening anymore. I actually, I only have looked through it for like a minute, but um, sorry if that's not a very pleasant sound, scooching the chair closer to me. Uh, David's on the other side of my camera. Hello, baby. And um, he hasn't seen what's in here either. He dropped me off at Caesar's Palace and then picked me up after. So thank you so much, honey, for dropping me off and picking me up. I appreciate it. <sighs> let's see, let's see what's inside. I think it's like a lot of stuff from sponsors and stuff. And um, <laughs> there's no cheese graters, I don't think. No handcuffs. It's not the same as my pack list. But um, hi, oh my God, Haichu. I don't know if you guys have ever had these, 
but there is this market. I grew up in Temple City, California, and there was this market called like 99 Ranch, and I would get high chew there all the time. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of these. It's a fruit candy. So good. Wow, that's like TBT right there. I haven't had high chew in forever. Next up. Um, I think I could do without this. Is that rude to say? From Bezos, the beginning? I don't know, it's a DVD also. Um, oh, but it's a movie. It's not like actually him. Okay, Emilio Estefan, really? Okay, all right. Interesting. That's an interesting thing to put in this sack. Next up, we have some nacho chips. Cute, cute, some like little concession snacks for when I'm watching all my Shrek movies. And um, what is this? Hmm, I wish I knew what this was, but it's a theater management system. So I don't, I don't really know what this is. Uh, it says real-time cinema operating monitor uh, and push notifications. So I think it's something for your phone. That's pretty cool. I'll look into that. I'm always down. Ooh, yeah. A little egg. Lots of snacks in here, you guys. This is cool. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Peanut M&Ms. Ooh, is that ASMR? You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, up next, we have uh, Back on the Strip. Oh, I guess it's a movie called Back on the Strip with Wesley Snipes. Uh, let's see. I don't... Oh, Tiffany Haddish. I don't know. I think it's a cookie or a condom. It's either a cookie or a condom. Who knows? It's Vegas. It could be anything. All right, up next. Oh, this is cool. Some uh, sticky notes. They say got film. Nice, nice. That'll be good for my note taking. Which, by the way, you guys, it was pitch black in the Celine Dion Theater where they showed all this footage, which I'll get to, but I want to do my unboxing, unbagging first. And uh, I took my notes in the pitch black on a pad of paper with a pen. I can't wait to try and decipher what I wrote because there's no way it's going to be legible. All right, we got a crunch bar. And we got some, ooh, Sour Bright crawlers. All right. Damn, there's a lot of candy. This is pretty lit. We have, oh, just what I need, a stress ball. Oh my God, I should just do this the rest of the video because your boy, your boy has been stressed. Stress balls. Oh my God, I'm running out of room on my counter. And, ooh, yeah. I hope this is all very ASMR for you guys. Oh, wow. Oh, this is pretty cool, you guys. From AMC Theaters. It's the Avatar, the Way of Water Cup with glitter. Actually, okay, so for those of you who have been watching me for a while now, uh, J. Scott Campbell, who, by the way, comic artist legend, uh, we have our interview up from last week. Uh, we also have a review. It's the second time he's been on my channel. We also have a review up from when we saw Avatar, the Way of Water together in December. And we had these uh, blue glitter drinks at the AMC Theater. And they were so good. Uh, but I think it turned my tongue blue. And, you know, if I'm going to be any color, it would be green because of Shrek. Speaking of Shrek, we got some Airhead Extremes. Why Shrek? Well, because green. And then we got, oh, gummy bears. Oh, I should give these to Rob. Rob loves gummy bears. But, nope, he won't like this kind because he only likes the Harboro gummy bears. And if you don't know this, he likes to... Uh, combine them and then eat them. This is a thing he has told me, hopefully, or I'm wrong. All right, we have, uh, I think these are luggage tags from St. Jude Children Hospital. I think they're luggage tags. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like to me. Oh my gosh, you guys, this counter is overflowing. Then we have some Lifesavers gummies. Ooh, nice, 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 nice. All right. Next up, we have some toxic waste bears in five delicious flavors. How could they be delicious if they're toxic waste? That's what I want to know. It's like those uh, those jelly beans. Oh, what's it called? Like, mm, oh, I don't remember the name of it, but there's this game where you can spin a wheel and then you have to eat whatever color the gummy, what is it? Jelly bean is. And then if it's like green, it could either be mint or it could be like vomit. Or if it's brown, it could be like 
chocolate or it could be like mud. And it's this game called like, oh, I don't remember, but it's a jelly bean game with like a little spinning wheel. And um, why did I bring that up? Mm, I don't know. All right, next up we got some Laffy Taffy Bites. Nice, nice. I actually haven't heard of a lot of these candies. Like I know Laffy Taffy, but I don't know these Laffy Taffy Bites. We got some Sweet Tart Minis, lit. June's so excited because she wants to know what all these things are. Oh, here we go. These are the gummy bears that Rob likes, but look at how tiny the bag is. <laughs> these are the ones that Rob loves, you guys. All right, we got some peanut chews. Cute, cute, cute. Then, ooh, body armor, strawberry banana. Pretty cool. Your boy is thirsty. It was like a hundred and what? A hundred and what? Five today? It was nuts. Speaking of nuts, well, these aren't nuts. Ooh, this looks really good, actually. Gourmet Miller's popcorn. Look at that. It's pretty cool because uh, I feel like a lot of these brands might be like smaller brands and then they're giving out samples so you can learn about their company. That's pretty cool. We have some chocolate raisins. We have some, uh, oh, the nacho cheese to go with those nachos, like the second thing that I took out of the bag. There's some nacho cheese, that's pretty cool. We have a, uh-oh, June's gonna go crazy. This is her favorite snack in the world. She's only allowed like one piece a month, but she loves um, POP corn, and there's a bag of that. Here is a blue straw <laughs> that I can only assume goes with the Avatar cup. This cup is like ASMR, you guys. Look at how cool it is though, the glitter. Isn't this cool, babe? I love it. I think they even like sold those in the theater during the release of the movie. We have some now and laters. Oh my God, I haven't seen these from like since the 90s. Not that I'm not old, of course not. Skittles, I'm only 18. Speaking of 18, oh no, it's a pen. <laughs> Never mind. I thought it was something else. But uh, that's good because let me tell you a little quick story about today. So I packed a couple of pens, like, uh, in case one broke or ran out of ink. And then I also packed um, a really nice notebook to take notes. <sighs> Your boy forgot him. So I was like nine minutes from Caesar's Palace. Well, I forgot him here. Like they're in the suitcase. They're here, but they weren't with me in the car. And I was texting Chris. And I was like, do you have a pen or a pad of paper? I was like stressing. But luckily at the check-in booth, they gave me both and they were very sweet. Oh my God, another pen. Look at this. They knew. They knew that your boy is forgetful. Butterfingers. Sorry, I'm gonna try and get through this because I know I know you guys want to hear about all the stuff that was released. We got some Swedish fish. Pretty cool. We're getting to the bottom here. Uh, this is, I think, another luggage tag. That's pretty cool. And then, let's see. This envelope, it's a CinemaCon. So it's the 24th through the 27th. Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. I don't know what's in here. Oh, it's just, I, I think, okay, I think it's gonna be like a lot of cards um, from all the sponsors and stuff. But that's pretty cool because I am really interested in like how they were able to, they did say that running the Celine Dion Theater cost CinemaCon $2 million. So the fact that they do have all these incredible sponsors is great that there's company like Coca-Cola, uh, Dolby, stuff like that, that will, Real D uh, was one of them. They talked about how uh, Avatar, The Way of Water, they were like $1.4 billion of the box office was in 3D. But it's just, it's great to see all these wonderful companies that want to come out and support CinemaCon because without all those sponsors, there's no way this event would even be possible, you guys. All right, speaking of events, the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh my God, my notepad, oof, oof, is under all the nacho cheese. Well, ASMR, ASMR. So, oh, that's wonderful. It's falling apart. <clears throat> you guys ready for my notes? So, CinemaCon day one, Monday, April 24th. I took these in the dark, I swear. So it's like, I don't know if I can even read them, but this is what I think it says. Oh, I know this for sure, because this is before anything started. Uh, so Chris and I sat together, and um, the first thing I noticed was there's a lot of bald men in the audience. So not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just something I noticed. So bullet point number one, lots of bald men. I don't know, maybe maybe that's something for a future potential sponsorship. All right, so today with Sony, 
Uh, they started, I want to say, maybe like 20, 30 minutes late. But that was fine because it gave me t prep time to like look over what to expect and make some notes. Like lots of bald, bald men. <laughs> so this was a very interesting choice. But the Sony presentation opened with a video of Will Smith. And uh, he was talking about Bad Boys 3. It's just a very interesting choice to open with Will Smith. Only because of how controversial he's been lately. And there were some... There were some comments made in the audience, but once it got rolling, um, I think people were into it and, and excited and excited to see the slate that Sony was going to present. So Josh Greenstein came out on stage and he announced that there are 23 films that Sony is going to be putting out theatrically this year. 23 films, that is nuts and also a huge accomplishment. And he was talking about the value in the theatrical experience, which I 100% cannot even put into words how much um, I agree with that sentiment. Because to me, the best way to see a movie is on the biggest screen with the loudest sound with as many people as possible and just in the theater. As you guys know, I'm at the theater three, four, last week, five times a week. And um, it was just really nice to hear sony come out and say we are here for the theatrical experience so the first movie that they highlighted is called dumb money and uh, i didn't know based on that title what it was going to be about but it's based on the true events that happened with gamestop and their meme stock and uh, it's funny because i want to say about a year ago i saw a movie that was a documentary about the gamestop meme stock but this is a dramatization of it and to present this first look at this film, they brought out one of the stars of the film, Paul Dano, the Riddler himself, came out on stage, you guys. And uh, he showed us a clip. And uh, it also stars Vincent D'Onofrio. That's right, Kingpin is in this movie. And I was so excited to see him. Nick Offerman, Seth Rogen. It's a very star-studded cast. This movie comes out in theaters. Ooh. I wrote the date on top of Seth Rogen's name because I wrote this in the dark, but I believe it says October Rogen. October 28th, you guys. And um, I'm excited because the documentary I saw, I want to say about a year ago, was really, really interesting to me. But now to get a dramatization of it and then to get it with these actors of these calibers, like, it's just... Th this is going to be fun. Um, the... Scenes that they showed us had Cardi B's WAP playing over it. And if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of that song. I actually, when she released WAP, um, she released a limited edition vinyl with Megan Thee Stallion. And uh, I bought it. And if you were, what was it, like the first like thousand people to buy it on her website uh, it came autographed. So I have an autographed Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion WAP vinyl. So uh, sign me up. I'm excited for Dumb Money coming out October Rogan's. All right, next up. Ooh, yeah. Next up, they moved on to Insidious, The Red Door, and I was nudging Chris. I was like, Chris, come on, I'm so excited for this. And speaking of Insidious, before I even get into this, as a lot of you know, the one and only Amy fucking Newman, she and I have a horror channel called Weenie's Guide to Horror, which is on YouTube. And um, because I am out of town this week covering CinemaCon for Fifty Shades of Tay, she put up a trailer reaction to the trailer for Insidious the Red Door. This is technically the fifth film in the franchise. However, based on the first trailer they released and this footage that we saw today, it's kind of like it's Insidious 3 because it's going to follow up the events of the first two. I'm excited. It was kind of an extended trailer. Um, so it was a lot of stuff we had already seen before. But a couple more looks. And... Um, I just kept nudging Chris because I'm so excited for Insidious, you guys. And and David, I think, has only ever seen one? None? None of them. So I'm excited to um, to watch all of them with David and then to go see the new one. And uh, they immediately followed that up. It was like a huge 180. They were talking about Insidious the Red Door and showing footage from that. And then it showed... The Machine. And the first time I had ever seen a trailer for The Machine was when I went to go see Cocaine Bear. And it looks great. Mark Hamill in a hard R comedy is something that I've always wanted and we're finally getting. And uh, it just looks hilarious. It was 
almost, I want to say like very close to the trailer we've seen with, with maybe like a couple more minutes of footage here and there. But the one thing that set this apart from the footage we've already seen was that the machine was dressed as the Little Mermaid, as Ariel, as he introduced this footage. It was really funny. I'm excited for this movie. I don't know much about the machine himself, that, that actor, that comedian. I don't really know that story. But the footage they showed us was hilarious. Him dresses Ariel, the Little Mermaid, was hilarious. I, I'm very excited for that. So next up, Christine Belson came out and uh, introduced Kemp Powers, who is one of the directors of Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse. Um, I am so excited for this movie. And they brought out three cast members. And I was so excited because I already knew they were going to be showing a Spider-Verse footage. I didn't know how much. I didn't know who was going to present it. And um, it's just how could you not, when you're Sony, show off what I think, you guys, is going to be the biggest movie of the month of June this year. How could you not show off that film, right? So uh, they brought out... I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, but I believe it's Shamik Moore, who is the voice of Miles Morales. It was Issa Rae, and she was great. She had such a great on-stage presence when she came out. She was just, like, glowing, and I don't know. There was just something about her personality. She was just very likable and very energetic. It was very nice to see her. But then Spider-Gwen herself, Haley Steinfeld, came out on stage, and I was like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. And I've, I've always loved her. I... Honestly, can't remember the first time I ever saw her, if it was her music career or if it was in one of the Pitch Perfect movies. But everything she's done from Bumblebee to being in Hawkeye, I, I just love Haley Steinfeld so much. And to see her on stage, she was just queen. And um, the footage they showed us, they showed us 14 minutes. And it was mostly finished footage. There was a little bit of stuff... Um, that was like a little bit rough that wasn't completed yet but they explained that going into it which is totally fine uh it featured some new music which the music was great everything about what they showed us was great and then this movie will be coming out june 2nd i just oh man spider verse is one of my most anticipated movies of 2023 i'm telling you guys right now off the top of my head i know in june elemental from pixar indiana jones and the dial of destiny i believe transformers rise of the beasts and then I think there's one more. Is it The Flash is also in June? I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm calling it right now, you guys, that Spider-Verse is going to be the biggest movie of the month of June. I, You heard it here first, even though I've said it before. So then we had the first ever look at Craven the Hunter. And I have been dying to see anything with this movie because, first of all, I love Aaron Taylor Johnson. How could you not? He's, he's amazing from being in Kick-Ass to being in bullet train he's just amazing and uh, he was he was not here but he had a little video presentation and it was hilarious because he was like will it be rated r because that's everyone's been asking that you know morbius wasn't rated r look how that turned out not that it would have fixed the plot but it would have been more bloody a little bit more violent and you know it would have helped a little bit i want to think he said this is a direct quote fuck yeah it will be rated r He's not going to talk people to death. And I was like, oh my God. So they showed the footage and it looks badass, you guys. Craven the Hunter, hard R. Yes, please sign me up. Aaron Taylor Johnson looked incredible. Cannot wait. Very violent. Uh, yeah, I, I was all smiles and 100% on board with this film. And then at the very end, they teased the rhino. They were like, don't you want to know why they call me the rhino? Oof. And then it showed this guy's skin and it was like kind of bubbling and changing into rhino skin. I am very excited for this movie. And another movie I'm very excited for is No Hard Feelings. For those of you who have seen this trailer already, you know how great this movie looks. It's a hard R comedy and it's starring Jennifer Lawrence. And I have loved Jennifer Lawrence from the moment I first saw her. And I, I want to say everything, but then I remembered... Um, what was it, Mother? I, sorry, you guys. I'm not a huge Mother fan. I know, I know. Oh no, but uh, she was she was still great in that movie. It's just I, I I didn't love that movie. But she herself is amazing. She's a queen. She came out on stage and she looked beautiful. She looked so good, and uh, she presented along with the director, Gene uh, Stepinski, 
a extended clip. It's the first interaction between her character and the young boy that she's being set up with. And it's when she walks into the pet shop uh, to adopt a puppy. And it's just a hilarious scene. And her in this comedy is exactly what her career needed because she took that little break. And just to see her come back with such a strong performance and a hilarious, hilarious script. It looks so good, you guys. June 23rd is when No Hard Feelings comes out. I cannot wait to see that movie in full and to have my Taylor's take on it. I'll be there day one. David, you'll be there day one, huh? David will be there day one. All right. So then we had Assad uh, Qu Quizblash. I'm really sorry. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But he came out from PlayStation Productions. And I didn't know what they were going to talk about. Uh, but they came to show off Gran Turismo based on a true story. So it's based on the video game, but also based on a true story. And they explained it a little bit, and I'm still a little teeny tiny bit confused about how it's the video game and a true story. But I believe it's a race car driver who learned how to drive based on playing this game, which is a race car driving simulation. Got it? It's okay. I don't think I have it 100% yet. But to present this first look at Gran Turismo, they brought out two actors from the movie. On stage, they brought out David Harbour, and I'm so sorry, Amy. I know Amy's at home screaming, and I'm sorry. Her true love, David Harbour, came out on stage with Orlando fucking Bloom, you guys. And they, pre or they, they presented this trailer, but what was really cool was they hadn't seen the trailer yet either, and they wanted to see it on the big screen with the whole audience, so they came out into the audience, off the stage, into the audience, and they watched the whole trailer with us. The movie looks great. Uh, I cannot wait for this movie, and... I don't even know if I really even knew about it. Like, I know they were making one, but I don't think I knew David Harbour and um, Orlando Bloom were in it. So I am very excited to see this movie. It was funny, though, because David Harbour was reading the stuff on the teleprompter, uh, which was <laughs> funny because throughout the night, I kept finding myself looking over at the teleprompter, like reading stuff, too. Just, I don't know. It was like a little bit distracting to me. But um, he was making a joke about the writer's strike and how much he loves chat GBT. It was It was pretty funny. He and Orlando Bloom on stage together had a really good chemistry, and I can't wait to see how that chemistry plays out in the film. So good. So then, oh my gosh, I didn't even tell this story, but, um, okay, so, so I was hanging out with Rob and Chris before um, it was time for the Sony presentation, and I forgot who, but someone that came out to us said, oh, Glenn Powell's here, and is at, like, the bar right there. And I was like, oh, I wonder what Glenn Powell's here for, because off the top of my head, I didn't know of anything coming out or about to come out that he would be here to promote and there's a film coming out that i had not heard of until tonight called anyone but you and it stars glenn powell who you guys will know from scream queens you guys will know from top gun maverick and then sydney sweeney who you guys will know from euphoria and also the first season of the white lotus i love her they came out together they said they just finished they said hours ago wrapping up this film in sydney australia and they said um that this film, since it was just like just finished and it's currently in post-production, um, they didn't have like actual, like an actual real trailer, but they had dailies from the film that were like strung together to make a trailer. And it's, yeah, it's a hard R comedy about these two people who hate each other and it looks really good. The two of them had on stage really good chemistry. They were making a lot of jokes. She was, Sydney was joking that she thought Glenn Powell was Miles Teller for the first four days of filming. And then, like, as they were getting ready to leave, she was like, honestly, I thought you might have been Tom Cruise. Like, they were just, like, going back and forth about their characters and, like, teasing each other. Very cute. And then, speaking of cute, you guys, one of my favorite franchises is the Ghostbusters. I've always loved the Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? And um, I was very excited because they started teasing it, and then they showed the Ecto-1, and they had the whole cast and crew, and they had Paul Rudd, and they had... Um, Finn Wolfhard, and they didn't really go into it too much, and I was bummed because I know, I think it was two years ago, they showed Ghostbusters Afterlife in full, so I was like, oh, maybe we're going to get like a clip or a scene or something, but all they really did was uh, just tease that it's going to be going back to New York City and back to the firehouse, which is fine. I wanted a teeny tiny bit more, but I'm just, I'm so hyped for this movie already, like I cannot wait for Ghostbusters, and um, it's going to be a fun, fun time. And then, uh, let's see, so after that, the chairman of Sony came out, and he came out walking to the Ghostbusters theme, and he was like, how can you ask for better music to walk out on stage to? That was pretty cool. That was, um, 
Tim Ruthman, and he came out and was talking about how Sony Pictures is entirely dedicated to the theatrical experience. He was talking about how other studios have gone to streaming or day and date, but Sony doesn't do that. And um, he was he was he was pretty tough on some of the other studios. He was like, you know, other studios say that there aren't movie stars anymore, and like we should let them believe that shit. Like he he was making some good jokes, some good points, and he was just talking about how uh, there are still movie stars, the theatrical experience is where it's at, and um, this led into something that I did not know was happening tonight, which was really cool. He introduced Antoine Fuqua who came out on stage, and then he presented the Lifetime Achievement Award to Denzel Washington, who came out on stage. So Antoine Fuqua came out, then he gave a little bit of a speech. They played a reel of Denzel's filmography, but how, you know how can you do that justice in just a couple of minutes? But they showed off just a teeny tiny bit of Denzel's amazing career. And then Denzel Washington came out on stage. He, he spoke. He said, thank you. You know, everyone stood up for him. Everyone clapped for him. Standing ovation. But it was hilarious because he was reading the teleprompter and it said ad lib. And he was like, ad lib, ad lib. Like he was just making jokes. And then he was like, oh, I'm supposed to bring someone out. So then he brought out um, Dakota Fanning, <laughs> which is really sweet. And together they premiered the Equalizer 3 trailer. This film comes out September 1st. And I came straight from Caesar's Palace to here and... I haven't had a chance to check my phone, but I want to say I believe the Equalizer trailer 3 trailer is out now on YouTube. And if it's not out now, I think it's going to be out very shortly. So that was very exciting because I did not know. I honestly did not know that they were giving a Lifetime Achievement Award to Denzel Washington tonight. So when that happened, I was like, holy shit. Uh, that, was, that was really, really crazy. Uh, and then I ran out of pages, so I got to figure out what I did because I started writing on the back of stuff. I think I started writing on the back, <laughs> the back of the pad that I had. So uh, let's see. Tom Ruthman came back out, and uh, <laughs> this is a direct quote, you guys. He said, "You can tell it's Sony. We aren't fucking around." <laughs> and he just again went over how they have over 20 films going to the theaters this year and how they have stuff like spider-verse which is animated they have stuff like hard art comedies they have stuff like craven the hunter they have all these things and uh, i thought that was going to be it and then he said that they had something uniquely significant and he started talking about ridley scott who is a goat who is a legend he started listing off movies that Ridley Scott has directed. And then he said Ridley Scott is 85, which blew my mind. That that can't be right. That cannot be right. I don't... Uh-uh. And uh, he brought up Napoleon and the Apple film. Apple as in the studio, Apple and uh, Apple TV. And how they are teaming up and they are going to be releasing Napoleon theatrically. But this is this is what's really interesting to me. So it's going to come out Thanksgiving. So in, uh, what is that, November? And he was saying, these are his words, that Napoleon's going to have a robust theatrical window and a full throttle marketing campaign. So those are really good words to me to hear. Because when you hear of something like Apple you think maybe it's just going to be like a limited, what, one week, two week limited engagement and you're going to have to, I don't know, go really far to find a screening. But hearing the words robust, theatrical window and full throttle marketing was really good to hear for me. Really reassuring, honestly. And um, he was saying that this film screams big screen. And he introduced the first scene ever shown. And... Oh my gosh. I I can't. I didn't even I don't even think I knew off the top of my head right now. I don't even think I knew that this movie was in production. And uh it was just a very moody, very snowy scene of a giant battle taking place and it just looks incredible and um I am very excited for this and very happy to hear that Sony's going to be putting all the money behind the marketing and pushing this into theaters, teaming with Apple. Very exciting. And then they ended their presentation. So, that concludes... Oh, actually, no, it doesn't. <laughs> what am I talking about? So, after... Oh, my God, I almost forgot about <laughs> the rest of the night. So, after the Sony presentation, I got in line to go to Omnia, which is a nightclub that is in Caesar's Palace, because Dolby 
as in Dolby, the sound <laughs> company, <laughs> the amazing. I love seeing movies in Dolby Prime, love seeing movies, or not Dolby Prime, uh, in Dolby. I love uh, their speakers. Everything about Dolby is just incredible. They put on this uh, like after party and dinner at Omnia. And uh, it was incredible because they had scenes of Across the Spider-Verse playing with like Lady Gaga was playing. There was like a lot of like techno music. It was just a really fun. I think they played some Dua Lipa. It was pretty fun. But um, I wanted to talk about a couple things that happened at this. So I went because I want to attend as much as possible this week. Um, I think tomorrow I'm going to be busy from like 7 a.m. to like 10 p.m. attending as many panels, presentations, um, just seminars as possible, make the most out of this week. And um, while I was there, uh, I was in the corner because I was by myself. Um, David's not attending CinemaCon. He's just here in Vegas while I'm in Vegas to be with me. And um, I was just chilling. And throughout, I want to say I was there like an hour and a half. Throughout the hour and a half, um, about a dozen different people came up to me and said, are you Tay? Are you Taylor? Are you Fifty Shades of Tay? And every single person that I met, I'm not going to get emotional, but every single person that I met tonight shook my hand, told me how proud of me they were and how happy they were uh, to see me uh, attending CinemaCon and how much they know, like, I've been working really hard to grow my channel and to be there and to cover it. And so, yeah, about a dozen people came up to me and it was just really emotional. And I thanked every single person and just said, like, that's crazy. And it's just so nice to meet people in person. What's really cool is so like my badge says my name and then it says Fifty Shades of Tay, which is who I'm here representing my YouTube channel. But there were people who were like managers of Regal. Uh, there was like a, a regional manager from like AMC. There was like everything uh people from yeah i don't i don't want to like specifically name <laughs> companies but there were a lot of people in the industry and they were coming up to me saying that they watched my channel so first of all but second of all uh every single person that came up to me today that took a picture with me that shook my hand that gave me a hug that fist bumped me everything um just thank you so much for all the support because it's it's one thing to sit here in front of my computer and talk for 37 minutes and 21 seconds but it's another thing to meet someone in person who appreciates what I do and supports me. It's just like, I can't even, I can't even put into words. So that was incredible, but there's something else that happened and I'm going to be a little bit vague about it and I'm really sorry, but there's someone that I look up to in the industry a lot and they were at this event. And uh, as you guys know, I have packed my business cards and I'm here to network and get interviews and just meet as many people as I can to hopefully have people on my channel, be on their channel, work together, collaborate. I met someone, well, <laughs> I ran into someone tonight and went to say hello. Uh, they knew who I was. Uh, they told me how proud of me they were and uh, I gave them a business card. They loved the design. They already knew who I was. Uh, and we had a really nice, maybe like five, 10 minute conversation. And I'm really happy with how it went. And I wish I could say more, and I'm really sorry. But just know, you guys, I am out here thinking of you guys, the viewers, working hard. Um, it's now 11.26, and I've been talking about today for 38 minutes, and I hope you guys are enjoying this presentation. Um, so for those of you just joining, because I've been getting some new subscribers, because you guys know that I am covering CinemaCon, uh, I do have a couple of videos that have gone out the past few days one of them is my, my packing for CinemaCon video, which is hilarious because there's so many people, I'm really sorry, who thought it was like legit. Like, oh, I wonder what kind of gear Taylor packs or oh, I can't wait to see Taylor's outfits. It's just a bunch of bullshit. And <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is what you guys signed up for when you subscribed to Fifty Shades of Tay, a bunch of shenanigans. I just wanted to show off my funny side and just, you know, have some fun before this huge week and then today I put out my very first ever vlog and um, I'm really proud of it I know it's short it's like four and a half minutes but honestly it was just David and I driving through the desert for like three and a half hours uh, listening to podcasts but it was my first time ever really I don't know it, it was a completely different style I think than what I'm used to like I'm used to live streaming or I'm used to like a little bit more structure so to 
attempt this vlog for the first time. Um, I'm proud of it. And that's just the beginning because the vlogging is something that I know you guys really want me to get into and I am interested in. I just need to practice. So this was the first of hopefully many and hopefully better content. But um, that is the end of day one of CinemaCon. I have been posting stuff on my Instagram, on my Twitter, on the community tab here. Um, I'm going to try and keep doing that as the week goes on. I just, I want to post more to my community tab, but I also don't want to like spam you guys with a bunch of pictures. So pictures will probably mainly go on Instagram and Twitter, which are also 50 Shades of Tay, three Ys, zero dads. But I will say day one was really emotional for me just to see my name on the credentials, uh, followed by my YouTube channel. And then also uh, to hear all the people who I met in person today uh, and how proud of me they are. That, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever get used to that. Uh, and I did meet one, two, three. I told David this. Uh, he picked me up at Caesars and then we drove here. I told David this in the car. Uh, I met three YouTubers that I, I don't want to say grew up watching because it's been like less than a decade. But, you know, a, a good chunk of my life uh, would watch them and listen to their commentary. And I really um, like value their opinions and look up to them in this industry. All three of them knew who I was <laughs> and were very kind to me. So if this is just day one of four days, uh, I cannot wait to see what is next. Uh, some other stuff that I'm going to work on. So every day I want to do a video like this where I come home at the very end of the day and just like recap. Here's all the announcements. Here's what they were showing. Here's the footage that was out. Uh, but I also want to try and get some stuff while I'm out and about. Uh, but I just have to see how that's going to work because during these presentations, for example, you cannot have your phone out. Uh, they have people with like infrared stuff, checking laser pointers, making sure you're not recording anything, filming anything, taking pictures of, you know, because the footage is not ready to be shown. And then also they're going to be showing movies that don't come out for months like Boogeyman, The Flash, Joyride. So uh, that's that stuff I can't do. But there's um, there's a room by where check-in is that I'm going to attempt to over the next day or two get a lot of pictures and videos and maybe put something together like maybe a little mini vlog where there's like brand new character posters for spider-verse i think they had some ninja turtle stuff um the costume from blue beetle was there and there's a photo op for barbie where it's a box and you act like you're a barbie stuck in the box so just keep an eye out on all the platforms that I have 50 shades tay for all the coverage and thank you guys so much for all the words of support. I've been trying. I've been trying so hard to keep up with all of your comments. I'm trying. But also, I can't have my phone for like a good part of the day. So just thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your support. I appreciate you guys so much. And now I'm going to go shower, have some water, and sleep for like five hours. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Thank you so much for everything. Have a good night. See you. Bye.